Today I want to talk about a book that I've known for the vast majority of my life, and for that reason I am incredibly intimidated about talking about it because I hardly know where to begin. It's one of the most extraordinary books I've ever read, and it has paid me back endless dividends in terms of thinking about things that can go into science fiction and fantasy work. And the book is called Gödel Escher Bach, An Eternal Golden Braid, that's the subtitle, by Douglas R. Hofstadter. And there's a subtitle under the subtitle, A Metaphorical Fugue on Minds and Machines in the Spirit of Lewis Carroll. And what that means is the book is basically about Hofstadter trying to entertain various ideas about what thinking is, what thought is, what minds are, and how those things relate to all of the ways that we try to synthesize such things in the form of thinking machines, in the form of computation, or in the form of mathematical formulas. And the way that he does this is not by sitting down and trying to figure out the state of the art and plowing through all of the, the literature on the subject. Instead, he does it in a much more open-ended and playful way, hence the Lewis Carroll reference. Because the book is organized into roughly two different kinds of chapters. The first is the author speaking directly to the reader about one subject or another. At first, none of these things seem to have anything to do with each other, but they all seem to be floating in the general area of his larger concept of discussions. All of them have something to do, if only in what seems like a really tertiary fashion, with the idea of what is thinking, or what is a mind, or what do we mean when we talk about thinking as a form of computation, or vice versa. The other types of chapters are dialogues, and they are dialogues that take place between this clutch of characters. Um, this is where the Lewis Carroll part of the, of the, of the, of the uh, title seems to come into play. Um, the, the characters that he brings in are essentially figures from, from myth and fantasy. Achilles and the tortoise, who had their famous race, and a number of other characters, all of whom embody certain points of view or who bring certain kinds of discussion to the table. And what they do is, through their dialogue and their discussion and their dramatization, they bring to life everything that has been talked about in one of the previous chapters. So you get to see the author talking about it, and then you get to see these characters sort of acting it out, embodying what the discussion is all about. Now, when I first encountered this book, I was all of maybe eight or nine years old, and I could understand maybe only a fraction of it, but I tried. And I found that what happened was that I was reading only some of the chapters that the author, where the author was speaking directly to me, and I concentrated most of my reading on the chapters which were the dialogues, and I discovered later on down the road that this was not the worst approach, that I actually learned a great deal about what he was trying to say through the discussions that the characters were having. So the Gödel Escher Bach part of the title, this is the other thing that, that confuses the heck out of people. What, are the, what, is, what does these things have anything to do with his subjects? Well, these three people are respectively Gödel the mathematician, the one who gave us the, the incompleteness theorem, the idea that any system cannot formally prove itself, and which truly disrupted a lot of the thinking about math and logic in the 20th century. And M.C. Escher, the artist, this is someone that we all have probably seen one picture or another of. You know, one of the one of the more famous ones is that endless, famous endless staircase. You've probably seen a poster of it somewhere. And his images are used as a way to embody ideas of paradox and self-referentiality. This is something that, that comes up often in Hofstadter's discussion, is that for him, the idea of a mind is that it is something that can embrace the idea of paradox and self-referentiality and escaping from one's own frame of vision without completely breaking apart. A mind can do that, a computer can't. There's a lot more to it than just that, but that's basically one of the, one of the things he comes back to often. And Johann Sebastian Bach, well, one of the most famous composers of all time, the man who basically invented modern Western music as we know it. And his almost geometric and mathematical compositions are also used as points of reference for how a higher elegance and, and a higher beauty can be found in those things. So the book f skips and switches between points of view, between conceits about how to interpret these things and how to think about them. And it's one of those books that I would gladly take to a desert island. If I could only take like three books in my life, this would be one of them. And I've read it probably a couple of dozen times now. I'm not exaggerating. This is 
the copy that I have here, I picked up about 12 or 13 years ago. And when I did, I put tape on the binding because my previous two copies fell to pieces. The first one was the, the very first one that we had, which was actually my brother's. He left it behind when he left home. I read it to death until the spine split. And then I went out and got another copy used. I ended up destroying that one too. So I'm on my third copy at this point. And honestly, this is a book that you really want to experience as a printed piece of matter rather than anything digital because the typography and the graphics, all of which contribute enormously to the presentation of his ideas, they're all really hard to duplicate digitally. You really want to have this on a shelf. And again, what I find most wonderful about this book is that it's the kind of thing that you can just delve into and there is literally something profound and thought-provoking and thought-stopping, the kind of thing that just makes you go, dang, how do I even fit this into my frame of reference on literally every page? There are so few books that are that, are that rich and that are that worthy of coming back to constantly. And that's exactly what I've done with this over the last 40 plus years. Now, how does all this relate to the, to the big topic, to science fiction and fantasy? Well, for me, it's about how to think about a particular idea, about the way that you can take an idea that would, that would be you know, normally quite formalized and quite sober, and you can turn it into something like play. And so a lot of my favorite science fiction has a little bit of that flavor. One of my favorite science fiction authors is the Polish author Stanisław Lem. And he would do something of the same things in his books, is that he would take an idea or a collection of ideas and he would, he would treat them in a highly uh, quirky, jocular fashion. He would have the characters and situations in his stories embody these things in a way that was very playful. And for me, that worked a lot better than just having people sit around in rooms and talk about it. I'll probably be going into detail about his work later on because, again, I've tended to de-emphasize individual authors of science fiction and fantasy when so many other people do the same thing, but he's really someone that's just too good to pass up, especially in light of discussing this book. So it, Gotel Escherbach provides, for me, a frame of reference, a way of talking about things that is spirited and, and playful, and that is worthy of being turned into something that can be used in a story. That attitude there are very few pieces of, of science fiction that are able to execute well in that attitude. And anybody who can do that, I have tremendous respect for. The same goes for fantasy as well. You know, a lot of what is in the book could be described, especially the dialogues sections, could be described as a, as a kind of work of fantasy. And then again, Lewis Carroll comes back into the picture. He was writing a fantasy of a, of a very um, cultured, brainy sort. And a lot of that that very, very specific kind of, of uh, cheeky, highbrow uh, in-joking is used in this book to the, same, to the same sort of effect. And I've noticed through this whole thing, as I've been talking about this, how, how, just how difficult it is to capture the, the sheer joy of reading this thing. It's, it's one of those books that you just want to give to somebody and say, if you're not hooked by the first 50 pages or even by the first 25 pages, you won't be. And if you are hooked, stick with it because it's going to deliver unbelievable dividends. So again, the book is Gode Lescherbach. The author is Douglas Hofstadter, who has a great deal of other material in this vein, also worth checking out. I will be circling back to him in future videos. And again, I strongly recommend the print version over any digital version that you find for the simple reason that this is, this is something worth savoring in front of you the way that a great graphic novel is worth savoring. The presentation is nine-tenths of the fun. See what you think. I think you'll think a lot.